Hi, listeners. Today we bring the power of subconscious mind to you. This is a book that has changed the lives of many and is loved by all of those who read it. Your likes bring in motivation for creating new content for all our listeners out there. So go ahead and hit the like button. For all our non-subscribe listeners, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Happy listening. I have seen miracles happen to men and women in all walks of life all over the world. Miracles will happen to you too when you begin using the magic power of your subconscious mind. This book is designed to teach you that your habitual thinking and imagery mold, fashion and create your destiny. For as a person thinketh in his subconscious mind, so is he. Do you know the answers? Why is one person sad and another person happy? Why is one person joyous and prosperous and another person poor and miserable? Why is one person fearful and anxious and another full of faith and confidence? Why does one person have a beautiful, luxurious home while another person lives out a meager existence in a slum? Why is one person a great success and another an abject failure? Why is one speaker outstanding and immensely popular and another mediocre or unpopular? Why is one person a genius in her work or profession while another toils and moils all his life without doing or accomplishing anything worthwhile? Why is one person healed of the so-called incurable disease and another isn't? Why is it so many good, kind, religious people suffer the tortures of the damned in their minds and body? Why is it many immoral and irreligious people succeed and prosper and enjoy radiant health? Why is one person happily married and another very unhappy and frustrated? Is there an answer to these questions in the workings of your conscious and subconscious minds? There most certainly is. My reason for writing this book, what motivated me to write this book, was a deep desire to share with others the answers I have discovered to these and many similar questions. I have tried to explain the fundamental truths of your mind in the simplest language possible. I believe that it is perfectly possible to explain the basic and fundamental laws of life and of your mind in ordinary everyday language. You will find that the language of this book is that used in your daily papers and current periodicals, in your business offices, in your home, and in the daily workshop. I urge you to study this book and apply the techniques it outlines. As you do, I am absolutely convinced that you will lay hold of a miracle working power that will lift you up from confusion, misery, melancholy, and failure. It will guide you to your true place, solve your difficulties, sever you from emotional and physical bondage, and place you on the royal road to freedom, happiness, and peace of mind. This miracle working power of your subconscious mind can heal you in your sickness, making you vital and strong again. In learning how to use your inner powers, you will open the prison door of fear and enter into a life described by Paul as the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Releasing the miracle working power A personal healing will always be the most convincing evidence of your subconscious powers. Many years ago, I managed to cure myself of malignancy 
in medical terminology, it's called a sarcoma. By using the healing power of my subconscious mind, which created me and still maintains and governs all my vital functions. The technique I applied then is explained in detail in this book. I feel sure that it will help others to trust the same infinite healing presence lodged in the subconscious depths of all of us. Thanks to the kindly advice of an elderly doctor friend, I suddenly realized that it is natural to assume that the creative intelligence that made all my organs, fashioned my body, and started my heart can heal its own handiwork. The ancient proverb says, The doctor dresses the wound, and God heals it. Wonders happen when you pray effectively. Scientific prayer is a harmonious interaction of your conscious and subconscious levels of mind scientifically directed towards a specific purpose. This book will teach you the scientific way to tap the realm of infinite power within you, enabling you to get what you really want in life. You desire happier, fuller and richer life. Begin to use this miracle working power and smooth your way in daily affairs, solve business problems, and bring harmony in family relationships. Be sure that you read this book several times. The many chapters will show you how this wonderful power works and how you can draw out the hidden inspiration and wisdom that is within you. Learn the simple techniques of impressing the subconscious mind. Follow the new scientific way in tapping the infinite storehouse. Read this book carefully, earnestly, and lovingly. Prove to yourself the amazing way it can help you. It may be, and I believe it will be, the turning point of your life. Everybody prays. Do you know how to pray effectively? How long is it since you prayed as part of your everyday activities? In an emergency? in times of danger or trouble, in illness, and when death lurks, prayers pour forth. Just follow the daily news. There are reports that people all over the country are praying for a child stricken with so-called incurable ailment, for peace among nations, for a group of miners trapped in a flooded mine. Later, we hear that when rescued, the miners say, they prayed while waiting for rescue. Certainly, prayer is an ever-present help in time of trouble. But why should you wait for trouble to make prayer an integral and constructive part of your life? The dramatic answers to prayer make headlines and are the subject of testimonies to the effectiveness of prayer. But what of the many humble prayers of children? the simple thanksgiving of grace at the table daily, the faithful devotions wherein the individual seeks only communion with God. My work with people has led me to study the various approaches to prayer. I have experienced the power of prayer in my own life, and I have talked and worked with many others who have benefited greatly from the help of prayer. The problem usually is to tell someone else how to pray. People who are in trouble have difficulty in thinking and acting reasonably. Their problems overwhelm them and block their ability to listen and understand. They need an easy formula to follow, an obvious workable pattern that is simple and specific. The unique feature of this book is its down-to-earth practicality. Here, you will find simple, usable techniques and formulas that you can easily apply in your everyday life. I have taught these simple processes to men and women all over the world. The simple features of this book will appeal to you because they explain why you often get the opposite of what you prayed for. 
Thousands of times, people in all parts of the world have asked me, why is it I have prayed and prayed and got no answer? In this book, you will find the reasons for this common complaint, the explanation of the many ways of impressing the subconscious mind and getting the right answers make this an extraordinarily valuable book and an ever-present help in times of trouble. What do you believe? Contrary what many people think, it is not the thing that is believed and that brings an answer to a person's prayer. Prayers are answered when the individual's subconscious mind responds to the mental picture or thought in his or her mind. This law of belief is the secret operating principle in all the religions of the world. It is the hidden reason for their psychological truth. The Buddhist, the Christian, the Muslim and the Jew may all get answers to their prayers in spite of the enormous differences among their stated beliefs. How can this be? The answer is that it is not because of the particular creed, religion, affiliation, ritual, ceremony, formula, liturgy, incantation, sacrifices, or offerings, but solely because of belief or mental acceptance and receptivity about that for which they pray. The law of life is the law of belief. Belief can be summed up briefly as a thought in your mind. As a person thinks, feels and believes, so is the condition of his or her mind, body and circumstances. A technique, a methodology based on an understanding of what you are doing and why you're doing it will help you to bring some subconscious embodiment of all the good things of life. Essentially, answered prayer is the realization of your heart's desire. Desire is prayer. Everybody desires health, happiness, security, peace of mind, and true expression. But how many of us achieve all these goals? A university professor admitted to me recently, I know that if I can change my mental pattern and redirect my emotional life, my heart condition will improve. I know that. The problem is, I do not have any technique, process, or modus operandi. My mind wanders back and forth on my many problems, and I feel frustrated, unhappy, and defeated. The professor had the desire for perfect health. What he needed was a knowledge of the way his mind worked. It was this that would enable him to fulfill his desire. By practicing the healing methods outlined in this book, he became whole and perfect. There is one mind common to all individuals. The miracle working powers of your subconscious mind existed before you and I were born, before any church or world existed. The great eternal truths and principles of life antedate all religions. It is with these thoughts in mind that I urge you in the following chapters to lay hold of this wonderful, magical, transforming power. It will bind up mental and physical wounds, proclaim liberty to the fear-ridden mind and liberate you completely from the limitations of poverty, failure, misery, lack and frustration. All you have to do is unite mentally and emotionally with the good you wish to embody. The creative powers of your subconscious will respond accordingly. Begin now, today. Let wonders happen in your life. Keep on keeping on until the day breaks and the shadows flee away. The treasure house within you. You have infinite riches within your reach. To gain them, 
all you have to do is open your mental eyes and behold the treasure house of infinity within you. There is a storehouse within you from which you can extract everything you need to live life gloriously, joyously and abundantly. Many people are closed off to their own potential because they do not know about this storehouse of infinite intelligence and boundless love within themselves. Whatever you want, you can draw it forth. A magnetized piece of iron will lift about 12 times its own weight. But if you demagnetize this same piece of iron, it will not lift even a feather. In the same way, there are two types of people. Those who are magnetized are full of confidence and faith. They know they are born to succeed and to win. Others, so many others, are demagnetized. They are full of fears and doubts. When an opportunity comes, they say, What if I fail? I might lose my money. People will laugh at me. People of this sort will not get very far in life. Their fear to go forward makes them simply stay where they are. You can become a magnetized person when you discover and put to use the master secret of the ages. The master secret of the ages. Suppose someone asked you to name the master secret of the ages. What would you answer? Atomic energy? Interplanetary travel? Black holes? No, it's none of these. Then, what is the master secret? Where can one find it? How can it be understood and put into action? The answer is extraordinarily simple. The secret is the marvelous, miracle-working power found in your own subconscious mind. This is the last place most people would look for it, which is the reason so few ever find it. The marvelous power of your subconscious. Once you learn to contact and release the hidden power of your subconscious mind, you can bring into your life more power, more wealth, more health, more happiness, and more joy. You do not need to acquire this power, you already possess it. But you have to learn how to use it. You must understand it so that you can apply it in all departments of your life. If you follow the simple techniques and processes explained in this book, you can gain the necessary knowledge and understanding. You can be inspired by a new light and you can generate a new force that enables you to realize your hopes and make all your dreams come true. Decide now to make your life grander greater, richer, and nobler than ever before. Within your subconscious depths lie infinite wisdom, infinite power, and infinite supply of all that is necessary. It is waiting there for you to give it development and expression. If you begin now to recognize these potentialities of your deeper mind, they will take form in the world without. Provided you are open-minded and receptive, the infinite intelligence within your subconscious mind can reveal to you everything you need to know at every moment of time and point of space. You can receive new thoughts and ideas, bring forth new inventions, make new discoveries, create new works of art. The infinite intelligence in your subconscious can give you access to wonderful new kinds of knowledge. Let it reveal itself to you and it will open the way to perfect expression and true place in your life. Through the wisdom of your subconscious mind, you can attract the ideal companion as well as the right business associate or partner. It can show you how to get all the money you need and give you the financial freedom to be, to do, and to go as your heart desires. 
It is your right to discover this inner world of thought, feeling and power, of light, love and beauty. Though invisible, its forces are mighty. Within your subconscious mind, you will find the solution for every problem and the cause for every effect. Once you learn to draw out these hidden powers, you come into actual possession of the power and wisdom necessary to move forward in abundance, security, joy, and dominion. I have seen the power of the subconscious lift people up out of crippled states, making them whole, vital, and strong once more. Their minds made them free to go out into the world to experience happiness, health, and joyous expression. There is a miraculous curative force in your subconscious that can heal the troubled mind and the broken heart. It can open the prison door of your mind and liberate you. It can free you from all kinds of material and physical bondage. Necessity of Working Bases If you want to make progress in any field of endeavor, there is an essential first step. You must discover a working basis that is universal in its application. Before you can become skilled in the operation of your subconscious mind, you must understand its principles. Once that is achieved, you can practice its powers knowing the results you will certainly obtain. You can apply these powers for the definite specific purposes and goals you want to accomplish. For many years, I followed the profession of a chemist. One of the first things I learned in my early training was that if you combine two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen, the product will be water. Not occasionally, or most of the time, always. If you take one atom of oxygen and one atom of carbon and combine them, you can produce carbon monoxide, a poisonous gas. But if you add another atom of oxygen, you will get carbon dioxide, a gas that is harmless to animals and vital to plants. These facts are universal and unchangeable. They are what we call principles. The principles of chemistry, physics, and mathematics are no different in their working from the principles of your subconscious mind. If you want to make use of chemical or physical forces, you must learn the principles of these fields. If you want to make use of the force of your subconscious mind, you must learn its principles. Take the generally accepted principle. Water seeks its own level. This is a universal principle. It applies to water everywhere, at any time, and to all liquids that behave like water. The Egyptians knew this principle. They used it to make the foundations of the Great Pyramids perfectly level. Today, engineers use it when planning everything from an irrigation system to a hydroelectric power station. Or take the principle, matter expands when heated. This is true anywhere, at any time, and under all circumstances. If you heat a piece of steel, it will expand, whether the steel is from China, England, India, or an orbiting space station. Matter expands when heated. This is the universal truth. It is also a universal truth that whatever you impress on your subconscious mind is expressed on the screen of space as condition, experience, and event. Your prayer is answered because your subconscious mind is principle. And by principle, I mean the way a thing works. For example, an important principle of electricity is that it works from a higher to a lower potential. You do not change the principle of electricity when you turn on a lamp or cook on an electric stove. No, you use the principle. By cooperating with nature, you can bring forth marvelous inventions and discoveries that bless humanity in a countless way. 
Your subconscious mind is principle. It works according to the law of belief. You must know what belief is, why it works, and how it works. Your Bible says in a simple, clear, and beautiful way. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Mark 11.23 The law of your mind is the law of belief. This means to believe in the way your mind works, to believe in the belief itself. The belief of your mind is the thought of your mind. Just that and nothing else. All your experiences, events, conditions and acts are produced by a subconscious mind in reaction to your thoughts. Remember, it is not the thing believed in, but the belief in your own mind that brings about the result. Stop accepting the false beliefs, opinions, superstitions and fears that plague our humankind. Begin to believe in the eternal verities and truths of life that never change. At that point, you will move onward, upward and Godward. All those who read this book and faithfully apply the principles of the subconscious mind that are set forth here will gain the ability to pray scientifically and effectively for themselves and for others. Your prayer is answered according to the universal law of action and reaction. Thought is incipient action. The reaction is the response from your subconscious mind that corresponds to the nature of your thought. Fill your mind with the concepts of harmony, health, peace and goodwill. And wonders will happen in your life. The Duality of Mind You have only one mind. But that one mind possesses two distinct and characteristic functional parts. The frontier that separates the two is well known to students of the mind. The two functions of your mind are essentially different from each other. Each has its own separate and distinct attribute and power. Many names have been used to distinguish the two functions of the mind. These include the objective and subjective mind, the conscious and the subconscious mind, the waking and the sleeping mind, the surface and the deep self, the voluntary and the involuntary mind, the male and the female mind, and many others. All of these, whatever their implications, are recognitions of this essential duality. Throughout the book, I use the term conscious and subconscious to represent the dual nature of your mind. If another set of terms comes more easily to you, by all means use it. The important starting point is to recognize and acknowledge the double nature of the mind, the conscious and the subconscious mind. A wonderful way to begin getting to know the two functions of your mind is to think of it as a garden. You are the gardener. You are planting seeds of thought in your subconscious mind all day long. Much of the time you are not even aware of doing so because the seeds are based on your habitual thinking. As you sow in your subconscious mind, so shall you reap in your body and environment. Imagine your subconscious mind as a bed of rich soil that will help all kinds of seeds to sprout and flourish, whether good or bad. If you sow thorns, will you gather grapes? If you sow thistles, will you harvest figs? Every thought is a cause, and every condition is an effect. This is the reason it is so essential that you take charge of your thoughts. In that way, you can bring forth only desirable conditions. Begin now to sow thoughts of peace, happiness, right action, goodwill and prosperity. Think quietly and with conviction on these qualities. 
accept them fully in your conscious reasoning mind. Continue to plant these wonderful seeds of thought in the garden of your mind and you will reap a glorious harvest. When your mind thinks correctly, when you understand the truth, when the thoughts deposited in your subconscious mind are constructive, harmonious and peaceful, the magic working power of your subconscious will respond. It will bring about harmonious conditions, agreeable surroundings and the best of everything. Once you begin to control your thought processes, you can apply the power of your subconscious to any problem or difficulty. You will actually be consciously cooperating with the infinite power and omnipotent law that governs all things. Look around you, whether you live, whatever circle or society you are part of, you will notice that the vast majority of people lives in the world without. Those who are more enlightened, however, are intensely involved with the world within. They realize, as you will too, that the world within creates the world without. Your thoughts, feelings and visualized imagery are the organizing principles of your experience. The world within is the only creative power. Everything you find in your world of expression has been created by you in the inner world of your mind, whether consciously or unconsciously. Once you learn the truth about the interaction of your conscious and subconscious minds, you will be able to transform your whole life. If you want to change eternal conditions, you must change the cause. Most people try to change conditions and circumstances by working on those conditions and circumstances. This is a terrible waste of time and effort. They fail to see that their conditions flow from a cause. To remove discord, confusion, lack and limitation from your life, you must remove the cause. That cause is the way you use your conscious mind, the thoughts and images you encourage in it. Change the cause and you change the effect. It is just that simple. We all live in an unfathomable sea of infinite riches. Your subconscious is very sensitive to your conscious thoughts. Those conscious thoughts form the matrix through which the infinite intelligence, wisdom, vital forces and energies of your subconscious flow. Shape that matrix in a more positive direction and you redirect those infinite energies to your greater benefit. Each chapter of this book gives concrete, specific illustrations of how to apply the laws of mind. Once you learn to use these techniques, you will experience abundance instead of poverty, wisdom instead of superstition and ignorance, peace instead of inner strife, success instead of failure, joy instead of sadness, light instead of darkness. Harmony instead of discord, faith and confidence instead of fear. Could there be any more wonderful set of blessings than these? Most of the great scientists, artists, poets, singers, writers and inventors have had a deep understanding of the workings of the conscious and subconscious minds. It was this that gave them the power to accomplish their goals. Once, Enrico Caruso, the great operatic tenor, was struck with stage fright. Spasms caused by intense fear constricted the muscles of his throat. His vocal cords felt paralyzed, useless. He stood backstage, already in costume, while perspiration poured down his face. In just moments, he was supposed to go out on the stage and sing before an eager audience of thousands. Trembling, he said, I can't sing. They will all laugh at me. My career is finished. He turned to go back into his dressing room and then, suddenly, he stopped and shouted, The little me is trying to strangle the big me within. 
he turned towards the stage again and stood taller. Get out of here, he commanded, addressing the little me. The big me wants to sing through me. By the big me, Caruso meant the limitless power and wisdom of his subconscious mind. He began to shout, Get out! Get out! The big me is going to sing! His subconscious mind responded by releasing the vital forces within him. When the call came, he walked out on stage and sang gloriously and majestically. The audience was enthralled. From what you have already learned, you can see that Caruso understood the two levels of mind, the conscious or rational and the subconscious or irrational level. Your subconscious mind is reactive. It responds to the nature of your thoughts. When your conscious mind, Caruso's little me, is full of fear, worry and anxiety, the negative emotions these create in your subconscious mind, the big me, are released. They flood the conscious mind with a sense of panic and despair. When this happens to you, you can follow the example of the great Caruso. You can speak affirmatively and with a deep sense of authority to the irrational emotions generated in your deeper mind. You can say, be still, be quiet, I am in control. You must obey me. You are subject to my command. You cannot intrude where you do not belong. You will be fascinated to see what happens when you speak authoritatively and with conviction to the irrational movement of your deeper self. Your mind will be flooded with harmony and with peace. The subconscious is subject to the conscious mind. That is why it is called the subconscious or subjective. Outstanding Differences and Modes of Operation The conscious mind is like the navigator or captain at the bridge of a ship. He directs the ship. He sends orders to men and women in the engine room. They, in turn, control the boilers, instruments, gorges, and so on. The people in the engine room do not know where they are going. They follow orders. They would go on the rocks if the man on the bridge issued faulty or wrong instructions based on his findings with a compass, sextant, or other instruments. The people in the engine room obey him because he is in charge, because he is supposed to know what he is doing. The members of the crew do not talk back to the captain. They simply carry out his orders. The captain is the master of his ship, and his decrees are carried out. In the same way, your conscious mind is the captain and the master of your ship, your body, your environment, and all your affairs. Your subconscious mind takes the orders you give it, based upon what your conscious mind believes and accepts as true. It does not question the orders or the basis on which they are given. If you repeatedly say to yourself, I can't afford it, your subconscious mind takes you at your word. It sees to it that you will not be in a position to buy what you want. As long as you go on saying, I can't afford that car, that vacation, that home, you can be sure your subconscious mind will follow your orders. You will go through life experiencing the lack of all these things, and you will believe that circumstances made it so. It will not occur to you that you have created those circumstances yourself by your own negative, denying thoughts. Last Christmas Eve, a young woman named Nina W., who is a student at the University of Southern California, scrolled through an exclusive shopping area in Beverly Hills. Her mind was filled with anticipation. She was about to spend the holidays with her family in Buffalo, New York. As Nina passed a shop window, a beautiful Spanish leather shoulder bag caught her eye. She looked at it yearningly. Then she noticed the price tag and gasped. She was about to say to herself, 
I could never afford such an expensive bag. Then she remembered something she had heard me say at one of my lectures. Never finish a negative statement. Reverse it immediately and wonders will happen in your life. Staring through the glass, she said, That bag is mine. It is for sale. I accept it mentally and my subconscious sees to it that I receive it. Later that day, Nina met her fiancé for a send-off dinner. He arrived with an elegantly wrapped gift under his arm. Holding her breath, she unwrapped it. There was the identical leather shoulder bag she had looked at and identified as her own that same morning. She had filled her mind with the thought of expectancy. Then she had turned the matter over to her deeper mind, which has the power of accomplishment. Later, Nina told me, I didn't have the money to buy that bag, yet now it is mine. I have learned where to find money and all the things I need, and that is in the treasure house of eternity within me. How her subconscious responded. A few months ago, I received a letter from a woman named Ruth A., who had attended my lectures. She wrote, I am 75 years old, a widow with a grown family. I was living alone on a small pension and social security. My life seemed barren, hopeless. Then I remembered your lecture about the powers of the subconscious mind. You said that ideas could be conveyed to the subconscious mind by repetition, faith, and expectancy. Could it be true? I decided to try. I had nothing to lose. I began to repeat frequently with all the feeling I could muster, I am wanted. I am loved. I am happily married to a kind, loving, and spiritual-minded man. I am secure and fulfilled. I kept on doing this many times a day for about two weeks. One day, at the corner drugstore, I was introduced to a retired pharmacist. I found him to be kind, understanding, and very religious. He was a perfect answer to my prayer. Within a week, he proposed to me. Now, we are on a honeymoon in Europe. I know that the intelligence within my subconscious mind brought both of us together in divine order. Ruth discovered that the treasure house was within her. Her prayer was felt as true in her heart, and her affirmation sank down by osmosis into her subconscious mind, which is the creative medium. The moment she succeeded in bringing about a subjective embodiment, her subconscious mind brought about the answer through the law of attraction. Her deeper mind, full of wisdom and intelligence, brought her and her new husband together in divine order. Be sure that you think on this. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Ideas worth remembering. The treasure house is within you. Look within for the answer to your heart's desire. The great secret possessed by the great men of all ages was their ability to contact and release the power of their subconscious mind. You can do the same. Your subconscious has the answer to all problems. If you suggest to your subconscious prior to sleep, I want to get up at 6 a.m., it will awaken you at that exact time. Your subconscious mind is the builder of your body and can heal you. Lull yourself to sleep every night with the idea of perfect health and your subconscious, being your faithful servant, will obey you. Every thought is a cause and every condition is an effect. If you want to write a book, write a wonderful play. Give a better talk to your audience. 
convey the idea lovingly and feelingly to your subconscious mind and it will respond accordingly. You are like a captain navigating a ship. He or she must give the right orders or the ship is wrecked. In the same way, you must give the right orders, thoughts and images to your subconscious mind, which controls and governs all your experiences. Never use expressions like, I can't afford it or I can't do this. Your subconscious mind takes you at your word. It sees to it that you do not have the money or the ability to do what you want to do. Affirm, I can do all things through the power of my subconscious mind. The law of life is the law of belief. A belief is a thought in your mind. Do not believe in things that will harm or hurt you. Believe in the power of your subconscious to heal, inspire, strengthen and prosper you. According to your belief, it is done onto you. Change your thoughts and you change your destiny.